Now, the common, the common uh, uh, rumor is that all Ruckman does is preach about the King James Bible. That's the common rumor. That's from a bunch of backslidden hypocrites under conviction. I mean, you get up in a pulpit and you can, you can preach a message in the second coming of Christ, and one time in that message you can mention liquor, and every liquor head in that building go out the door saying, every time I go there, preach about drinking. You get a preach a message on prayer, and some stingy tight while to go out the door, and you preach the 30 minutes in prayer, and mention tithing one time, and some old tight while reprobate go out the door and say, every time we go there, talk about tithing, you know. Now, you hit a King James morning this morning, and I haven't preached this message for uh, nine years. So if you want some honey, come back tonight and I'll give you some honey, but this morning it's going to be nothing but vinegar for about 50 minutes. And I'm going to talk about the King James Bible this morning, and uh, I'm going to say what I mean, mean what I say. And if the brother don't like it, they can lump it. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 17. Proverbs 22, verse 17. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise. Not the Word of God, W-R-D-S, words. Not the principles, not the fundamentals, words. And apply thine heart to, to my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord, I have made known to thee, this day even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? That I might make thee know the certainty of the W. O R D S, and I don't mean fundamentals. Words of truth that thou mightest answer the W O R D S, and I don't mean principles. Words of truth to them that send unto thee. Jesus Christ said in the New Testament, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my W O R D S, and I don't mean principles, shall not pass away. Now, Father, we ask your blessed upon the message this morning. May the Word of God be exalted and magnified, as you said in your book, above your name. And may people realize the value of this book and treasure it as a nestable treasure that exceeds all the treasures of the earth, like the translator said in their preface. We pray, Heavenly Father, that if there's somebody here to whom the Bible is a, a dead book or a forgotten book or, or, or an unimportant book, that from this day on it will take the first place in their lives. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, God wrote a book one time. They all agree to that. God wrote a book. And God wrote a book, and there are translations of this book available. And uh, the name of this message is uh, Peter Ruckman versus Bob Jones University, Pensacola Christian College, and Baptist Bible College. That's the name of this message. You don't have a unique title like that in any message you've got up there in the library, brother. That'll be the title of this one. Now, you see up here, you see that over there? Is that over there? Those are two kinds of Bibles. God wrote one, there's two of them. They're not the same. You see this thing over here? This thing over here comes from two Greek manuscripts called Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, and I got them right there. There isn't any faculty member but any Christian school in the country that has more information than I've got. You never met one. That isn't bragging, that's just telling you a dying truth in case some of them want to strut their knowledge and impress you. You know what that is? That's the original Greek. And I mean, let me tell you, man, that is the black, black capital unsealed letters without the division marks in chapter and verse and letters. That is the real McCoy. That's Tischendorf out of the wastebasket and the Vatican Library in Rome. Now, you have different Greek editions of those two manuscripts. The main one is called Nestles, taught at Bob Jones University and called the infallible inspired word of God by Stuart Custer, head of the Bible department. You don't believe it? Write him and ask him. You don't believe it? Check me out. Here are two editions. 23rd edition, the last edition after 1980. You know what that is? That's a Greek New Testament. From that Greek New Testament comes the Living Bible. the New International Version and the RSV and the ASV and all the rest of them. 
Sometime this was called the West Cottonhort Greek text. It's right there. You don't know of a Greek professor in this country that has any more information on his fingertips than I do. You don't know of one. And don't act like you do, because you don't. And if you think you do, write him and have him contact me. That means Zane Hodges, Dallas Theological Seminary, Arthur Farstad, the Theological Seminary, and that means Wilbur Pickering, Dallas Theological Seminary. Anytime, any place, anywhere, baby. All right, now you see over here, here's the Greek text called the Textus Receptus. It's a Syrian type Greek manuscript that's sometimes called the Byzantine text and the majority text. That little book right there has the King James text right here and the Greek text for the King James text right there. You know what comes from that text? Well, let's see, y'all. I'm not much on French. I'll come on. I'll come on. Seulement étant la pourelle et la pourelle étant avec deux, 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 et la pourelle étant deux. That's a French Bible. That comes from the Texas Receptus. And el principio era el verbo, y el verbo era con Dios, el verbo era Dios. Okay. <laughs> That's a Spanish Bible. You know what that's from? It's from the Texas Receptus. I'm not going to put them over here. I don't want him to get the file. <laughs> I'll put them up. I'll find a place for them up here someplace. I must, well, I'll put them up here. Now, you see this thing right here? Und der Herr redet mit Mose und sprach, sagen den Kindern Israel und sprich zu ihnen, die sind die... That's the real language there. That's the real stuff there, y'all. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Baran Man von Moya, that's the stuff right there. Now, what's that? That's the Heilige Schrifter. That's Martin Luther from Receptus. You see that? That's worth about 8,000 bucks. You know how old those pieces of paper are? Those pieces of paper are 379 years old. 379 years old. You ought to touch that before you leave the building this morning. <laughs> you know what that is? That's your second edition of your King James Bible. That is the addition. That's 1613, sitting right there. That's from your Texas Receptus. You see this? This is what Thomas Nelson said they printed for you, they never printed at all. That's a 1611 edition of the King James Bible. Old Frockter German type bookstaba letters on it. The F for the S, Mofif, Mofif. Coughing the red feet. <laughs> That's what that is right there. Something right there. That's your original verbally inspired manuscript, according to some of the brethren. <laughs> That's the 1611. Somebody said, well, the 1611 so arcade, nobody could read it if they had it. They couldn't, though. All right. And he did that because even the side of the Lord and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebab, which made Israel to sin, he departed not there from. What do you mean they can't read it? You lion dog. You dirty lion dog, you dirty lion crook. I could preach out of this thing here every Sunday morning just like I preach out of any other edition that you pick your hands on. You read out of this thing here. Well, know what that is? That's Receptus. That's Receptus. That's Receptus. That's Receptus. They're not the same. All right, the sword of the Lord. September 17th, 1971. At last, a Bible you can believe in. At last, you mean you couldn't believe these? Why, you dirty dog. You dirty, foul-mouthed blasphemer. The very idea is telling me, at last, I've got a Bible I can believe in. You say, who is that? John R. Rice. And do you know, brother, good, old, good, godly, dear old, sweet Dr. John? One of the biggest liars in the business. You're welcome. Have a nice day. You don't like that, do you? You know, you know why you don't like that? Because you're a dirty, rotten, low-down bum. That's your problem. The very idea of you are not objecting to a fellow telling you at last you've got a book you can believe in. At last. At last. A Bible you can believe in. After being given that book for 300 years and your soul got saved through reading and believing that book. You dirty, rotten, cheapskates, you. I know what you are. You're a spiritual bum. You're bankrupt. 
Get offended. Build a fence around it. You know what Stuart Custer, Bob Jones, says about this book? It says its accuracy and faithfulness to the Greek text is phenomenal. After comparing it word for word with the Greek text, could it be this one here? I am convinced it is the finest modern language translations yet appeared. So are the Lord. The new ASV is thoroughly reliable and faithful to the original Greek text. Wow! <laughs> I've got the original Greek text here and didn't know it the whole time. Isn't that something? Boy, am I ever a dumbbell, huh? He says, what's this original Greek text? It is the 23rd edition of Nestles. Good, I got it right here. They are Nestles, 23rd edition. Isn't that something? Just think, I have the original Greek manuscripts on me here for 25, 30 years and didn't even know it. Boy, am I ever a dumb bunny. You talk about an out-of-date man. I'm really, I'm really out-of-date, you know that? Like a fellow said to his wife one time, he said, we'll go out sometime. She said, why don't you take me to a movie? He said, I've already taken you to two. And she said, yeah, but honey, now they have talkies. <laughs> he hadn't taken her out very much. What is this book here? John R. Rice, Sword of the Lord. He says, this book is, this new translation is really the ASV of 1901. Well, I've got that too. Boy, 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 I have a deep man. I had the original Greek text and the original Greek manuscript and the whole time, and I was, here I was wasting my time with that King James Bible. Boy, am I ever a dummy man. Now, you know what those fellows told you? They told you this book came from, quote, the original Greek text, so it's at last, it's a Bible you can believe in. That's what they told you. How many have got a Bible on you this morning? Would you raise your hand? Okay, open it. Matthew chapter 1. I mean, I want to show you a book you can really believe in. Now, what I've got up here is a new ASV, which John R. Ray says that the ASV of 1901, which Stuart Custer says is word for word, translated from the Greek text. And Stuart Custer says it's destined to replace all other translations. It is really the ASV of 1901, he says. Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. And kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Doesn't yours have the word firstborn in it? How many have firstborn? Let me see your hands. All right. Somebody is trying to cover up the fact here that Mary had other children. They left out firstborn. You got a Bible? Turn to Psalm 69, look at verse 9. Psalm 69, verse 9. This bunch of depraved degenerates, and I know they're saved men, they're just as full of the devil as a turkey is stuffed full of Christmas dressing. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you don't drink and don't smoke and don't dance and don't go to the movies and have three-quarter length sleeve and nowhere to make up and have your hair down the middle of your back. If you're messing with that book and lying to people about that book, you're full of the devil. That's your problem. That goes for you and all your friends, the fellows who taught you, too, as far as that goes. All right, Psalm 69, verse 9. Somebody stand and read it back there in the back. Somebody back there in the back. Stand up and read it. All right, read me the verse right before it. I have become a stranger to my brother and an heir to my mother's children. To who? My to who? My children. One more time. My children. Is that clear? You know what's talking there? That's Jesus Christ talking there. Amen. Yeah, you know what's Jesus Christ talking there? Because it's quoted in John chapter 2. How many got a cross reference in Psalm 69 on John 2? Let me see your hands. Look at the reference. Look at your margin. You see that thing right there? Mary had other children. Somebody's trying to cover up for you. All right, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Somebody's trying to teach you Mary is a perpetual virgin. And then telling you, at last, a Bible you can believe in. Good old Dr. John. Bless his heart. Thank God he's not around to do any more damage than what he did while he was alive. I'll check some of you half-breeds. <laughs> I'll check some of you folks got one foot in the door and the other foot out. Don't you sweat your heart about it, honey. They'll be saying that after, about me after I'm dead. You bet your life. Think if I can take it out as well as dish it. 
I ain't worried about it. All right, Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. But I say to you, everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever shall say to his brother, Rachel, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. <laughs> what, what, what a bunch, what a bunch, of, what, a, what a bunch of crap, you know. I'm at last a Bible you can believe in. Not if you're half saying no. Uh, shall be guilty enough to go into the hell of fire. Doesn't your Bible say whoever is angry with his brother without a cause? Oh, and you suppose, a few folks who are Christians, I guess, you suppose know something about your Bible. Did Jesus ever get angry? Yes. How many say yes? Let me see your hands. All right. Well, was he in danger because of that, of sinning? Why, of course not. He had a cause. Somebody's trying to convince you they got a Bible, they don't have a Bible. Like a fellow one time, he tried to convince people he was a musician. They said, well, did you ever have an orchestra? He said, yes, I had a, a three-piece combo. They said, what was that? He said, an organ, a cup, and a monkey. <laughs> Now you, you folks, you folks raised since the Depression don't appreciate that because you've never seen that. But a fellow used to put their little hand organ playing the thing. He had a cup and he had a monkey begging you. I was the guy's combo. I like the one, I like the one where a drunk is watching a guy barbecue out in the backyard and he said, Mister, he said, I got something bad to tell you. He said, the music stopped and your monkey is burning. <laughs> All right, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 27, verse 35. Matthew 27, verse 35. Now, you understand, this is a Bible at last you can believe in. This is thoroughly reliable, John R. Rice. Quote, thoroughly reliable, September 17th, 1971. Matthew 27, 35. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among them, casting lots. You say, is that it? That's it. And when they crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots. Some at the back, read this that thing out. Some at the back, read it. Somebody cut out half the verse. Somebody took half the verse, half the Word of God, and took that thing and threw it out the window. You know what Rice says? At last, a Bible you can believe in. Not if you're saying no. All right, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. Maybe some good godly men recommend this book, but Bible believers don't recommend it. Maybe fundamentalists recommend it, but Bible believers don't recommend it. You see where you get that stuff from? The sword of the Lord. You know the sword of the Lord named, named after? It's named after the Word of God. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet... Behold, I send my messenger before your face will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. How many Bibles do you have to say prophets? Let me see your hand. Prophets? Why, of course. You know why it says prophets? There are two quotations. Isaiah did not say verse 2. You know who said verse 2? Who, folks? Malachi. Why do you say Isaiah spoke it? Did God lie in the original manuscripts? He said, this is word for word, Stuart Custer, Bob Jones University. This is word for word, faithful to the Greek text, the original Greek. What's the matter? fellow wrote the original Greek? Didn't he have any sense? How come he didn't have the sense you got? You knew Malachi said it. How come he thought Isaiah said it? Kind of confused there, aren't you, friend? All right. Uh, Mark, chapter, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Now, you understand these people? These people are saved people that use a Bible they don't believe. They're separated. They're sanctified. They don't smoke. They don't drink. They don't go to dances. But they'll lie to you and steal from you as quick as look at you. They take your Bible right out of your back pocket. They're thieves. They say, well, Ruckman, 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 you're afoot. I'll tell you two things Ruffman won't do. He won't steal your money from you, and he won't steal your Bible from you. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. And hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Yet to what? A hunting trip? I'm come to call sinners to what? A ball game? Call sinners to what? A dance? Left out the word repentance. How godly can one get? 
Oh, I take your Bible, turn to Mark chapter Mark chapter seven, verse sixteen. Mark seven sixteen. Uh, just just think all this time I've had the I've had the verbally inspired original Greek text right here. And haven't many been preaching to you folks. Now I'm under conviction. <laughs> Mark chapter 7, verse 16. Aren't you ready? <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> you say, where is it? It ain't there. There is no Mark seven sixteen, in at last a Bible you can believe in, thoroughly reliable according to the sword of the Lord or the penknife of the Girl Scouts. Well, you know what they're doing? They're just taking stuff out. They don't like it. Out it goes. Out it goes. Out it goes. It's a hobby horse for them. They, they, you ever hear them say a better translation would be, you know, than a hobby horse? A more accurate translation, you know, giddy out. The Greek said, while they're just tearing it up. A little boy said one time, his daddy, he said, Daddy, his daddy's a preacher. He said, Daddy, what are you doing? He said, I'm writing out a sermon. He said, how come you scratch out all those things there that you're writing? He said, well, I need to make some changes. And he said, well, Daddy, does the Lord give you your sermons? He said, yes. The boy said, did he tell you what to say? The Daddy said, yes. He said, what do you keep scratching him out for? <laughs> all right, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Now, you understand who's recommending this thing? Born again, save soul-winning fundamentalists. Thieves. Alibaba and the forty thieves. Mark chapter nine, verse forty four. Mark nine forty four. All right, you ready? There it is. That's the verse. Let's try Mark let's try Mark chapter nine, verse forty six. That's it. You say what? It isn't there. There isn't any verse. You know what they did? They just tore everything they didn't like. Luke chapter 1, you Catholics, this is for you. Now, I'm not a Catholic, but if I were a Catholic, I'd sure resent this. Luke chapter 1. Now, folks, you don't just get edgy about it. If you want to get an ASV, get it. I've got one. You want to get a Jehovah Witness Bible? Get you one. I've got one. I've got 26 translations back there. You just saw the living Bible. I buy them. If you want to buy them, buy you one. I'm an American, brother. I believe in freedom. Let freedom ring, man. Buy the cut and take anything you want to buy. Read whatever you want to read. But don't stand here in this pulpit or any pulpit and say, I believe this Bible is the Word of God. I believe this book is inspired. I believe this is the Word of God. Amen, amen, amen. When you're lying like a dog. That's what wears me out. You know why people lie? They lie because they're scared. Every time you lie in your life, it's because you're scared. You know your kids, don't you? You know your kids, you know when they lie? When they're scared. I can understand that. I don't say it's right, but I understand it. I thought I'd get scared about something. You try to lie way out of it. What are these fellas lying about for here? What are they afraid of? The fellow lied to you. He said, at last, a Bible you can believe in. He's a dirty liar. What do you do it for? Scared of what? He said, this book is thirty. He's a liar. Tell him I said so. He knows where to get a hold of me. What's the problem? I don't know what the problem is. They're scared to death about something. Over there in London, England, Billy Bartlett and Larry Bartlett went through Spurgeon's Memorial Tabernacle over there with Metropolitan Tabernacle with uh, Eon Paisley about ten years ago. And they said, Dion Paisley, do you ever read uh, Brother Ruckman's books? He said, oh yes, I read Dr. Ruckman. And they said, well, what, what do you think about his position on the King James Bible? And Eon Paisley said, well, he's absolutely right. But don't tell Dr. Bob I said that. Why not? I don't care what you tell anybody I said you. The stuff's going on video right now. It'll go over the country. I'm not sweating out anything. You mean to tell me a fire eater like Eon Paisley who can stand up in the French Parliament and call the Pope an Antichrist? You mean to tell me he's worried about what Dr. Bob has to say about it? Bless your soul, honey, I don't get a flip what anybody says about me. Now or later. 
strange business. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Luke 1, 28. And coming in, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Somebody in the back, read me the verse. Anybody back there in the back, read it out loud. Louder, brother, like you used to do when you preached in the street. Why, blessed are thou among women. That isn't in this verse. Now, if I was a Catholic, I'd resent that. I'm not a Catholic. Now, you don't mean to go around and say, hey, Mary, full of grapes, you know, blessed be the fruit of the loom and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't believe that kind of stuff, but I was a Roman Catholic. I'd resent that thing right there, messing with that thing on, that thing on Mary. I'd resent it. Like I said, if you, if you, if you want to do it your way, do it your way. I don't care. Uh, some of you folks upset right now, listen, all I'm doing right now is exercising my freedom of speech, which I'm not going to have much longer. And I'd give you a perfect right to have all the freedom of speech you... You know something, if I, if I rent a radio station, you know what I'd do? I'd sell 30 minutes to the black Muslims, and then sell 30 minutes to the Ku Klux Klan, and then sell 30 minutes to Oliver Green, 30 minutes to the Poop. And thirty minutes to weathermen, and thirty minutes to minutemen, and thirty minutes the national count of the National Rifle Association, and thirty minutes the ACLU. That's what I do. Put all of a green and maze Jackson right between them. <laughs> freedom, brother, freedom. I'm not worried about what you're going to say. It should be worried about what I'm going to say. Some of you folks, well, I don't be what Ruckman says. You don't have to. I don't represent you anyway. You know, I represent. I represent. I represent the people that believe this book. All right, Luke chapter 2, verse 33. Luke chapter 2, verse 33. Turn to it. Luke chapter 2, verse 33. And his father and mother were amazed at the thing which was said about him. No, Joseph wasn't his father. A man said to me one time, he said, he said, well, in that same chapter, Mary calls Joseph Christ's father. Yes, but Mary is protecting Christ's birth. Christ before his enemies in the temple, and Mary is trying to make it look like it's a legitimate birth when she says, Thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. Why, Mary knew perfectly well Joseph wasn't his father. Nobody on earth knew that better than Mary. <laughs> She's protecting his reputation. That thing you read there in Luke chapter 33, that isn't Mary talking. That's Luke supposedly speaking on the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Do you think he'd call Joseph Christ's father? Oh, I take your Bible and turn to oh, Luke again and get Luke chapter Luke chapter four verse four. Luke chapter four verse four. You understand the sword of the Lord says at last a Bible you can believe in. Thoroughly lot reliable, faithful to the original Greek text. Luke four verse four. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. I'm through. Boy, you talk about negativism. How's that? The old Ruckman isn't positive enough. How's that for negative, boy? You close the thing with a negative statement. You're not to live by bread alone. Don't t tell a fellow what to do positively. You think I'm negative. How you like that one? Doesn't your Bible say, but for every word of God doesn't go on there and say that? Yeah, but you can't. That isn't reliable. At last. At last. You got a Bible you can believe in if you're just as nutty as a pecan pie. <laughs> All right, John. Oh, uh, I think it's John. Oh, uh, no, make it make it Luke again. And uh, make it Luke. Oh, uh, uh, Luke seventeen verse thirty-six. Luke seventeen verse thirty-six. Luke seventeen thirty six. Okay, that's that one. Luke chapter twenty three verse forty two. There is no there is no Luke seventeen thirty six in this reliable Bible you can count on. It's gone. All right, uh, Luke chapter twenty three. Luke chapter twenty three verse forty two. Luke twenty three forty two. Dying thief on the cross. What a blasphemous corruption. Luke twenty three forty two, and he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. 
Does yours say Lord? How many of yours says Lord? Let me see your hands. But they took his divinity away from him right when he's getting that fellow saved. At last, the Bible you can trust in. Who said that? Good old, sweet, godly Dr. John R. Rice. So the Lord, Curtis Hudson. Bless your heart. I wonder how come he didn't pr pr print a retraction for, for that thing right there. Now listen. Back in the early days of Christianity, they had a heresy called doceticism. I'll tell you what doceticism was. Doceticism was the teaching that Jesus Christ was a man, an ordinary man. And when he got baptized here, the Holy Spirit came down upon him and turned him into the Christ. And the Holy Spirit at other times made Buddha a Christ, and Muhammad a Christ, and Lao Tse a Christ, and made Jesus a Christ. Holy Spirit came on him like that. Then when he died on the cross, the Holy Spirit left him. And when the Holy Spirit left him, he was no longer deity. So he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was a man before he was before his baptism. He was a man at his crucifixion, and his deity only was after he got baptized and before he got crucified. So when he gets crucified, you take the name of deity out of the dying thief's mouth, Lord, and give it a man's name, Jesus, and tell these dumb, stupid, foolish, shallow, Bible-rejecting fundamentalists, at last, a Bible you can believe in. Not unless you got one oil in the water. <laughs> All right, Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Luke 24, 23, 23, 45. You say, well, why don't you get some rat about, rabbit about? They're messing with my book. Amen. Maybe that book doesn't mean nothing to you. It means something to me. Amen. You sell old King James Bible? Listen, listen. I've laid around in motels and hotels in this country at 12 o'clock at night and 1 or 2 in the morning with the call girls going up and down and phoning in and the things squeaking next door and leaving bottles out my hallway in front of my room at night, whiskey bottles. I've been in places like that when my spouse was mailing my wedding ring back to me in the meeting and I had a temperature of 102 degrees and not much of an offering and I'd have fallen a thousand times if it hadn't been for that book. And God Almighty got me through and got me through for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. You mess with that book, honey, I'll mess with you. And you know you've been messed with when you've been messed with. Well, that book is for me, brother. That book for me is the kiss of God and the lost soul of man, brother. You know what kept me up in those days? The only thing that kept me up was that book and a bunch of folks praying for me. Don't you tell me at last I've got a book I can believe in. Don't you tell me that stuff after I've tried out this book for 40 years. Don't you give me that gas. Hudson or Jones, any one of you fakers, you two-bit, pious, lying, thieving faker, you. Their idea is try to steal my faith in that book. Saying, at last, Ruckman, you got a book you can believe in. You dirty crook. I can say, uh, no, that ain't the right gesture. <laughs> All right, uh, Luke chapter 23, Luke chapter 23, verse 45. The sun being obscured, the veil of the temple is torn in two. The sun being obscured, that'd be an eclipse. There wasn't any eclipse when Christ died on the cross. God Almighty put out the candles in the sky without an eclipse. It was supernatural. John chapter 1, verse 18. John 1, 18. All this stuff, all this stuff. John 1, 18. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he hath explained him. Is that right? Watch it. No man has seen God at any time, one, the only begotten God, two, who is in the bosom of the Father, he, the begotten God, hath declared him this other God. How many gods that is? Count them. A one, a two. Uno, dos. Ein, five. It's me. <laughs> one, two. Two gods. You know what you call that? You call that Arianism. You know who teaches that? The Jehovah Witnesses. Now listen, I don't care if you're a JW or not. If you want to go to a kingdom hall, help yourself, buddy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, well, we got the, I'm not saying that. If you're a J.W., go to the J.W., but listen, don't you put a Jehovah Witness Bible into my hand and tell me that's a book I can believe in. Don't you give me that gas. And say, well, there's one God, He's not begotten. The other God, He's begotten. And the begotten God declared the God that wasn't begotten. That's two gods. We don't believe in two gods. 
You want help yourself? Listen, honey, if you don't believe in two, you don't believe one God, believe in two gods, you can believe in two, five, twenty, thirty, four. It's okay with me. If you don't believe in any God, it's okay with me. If you want to be an atheist, just fine. Dial the atheist, you know, dial number, you know, and that toll free channel, and it keeps ringing and nobody answers. <laughs> If you want to, listen, if you want to, if you want to be an atheist or a polytheist, it's okay with me. But don't tell me and my people that you're going to give us a Bible from the original Greek that we can trust and it teaches there are two gods. Don't give me that stuff. I mean, don't, don't act like the thing is what it's not. You know what you're like? You're like a fellow one time met a guy on the street and he said, well, there, if it isn't my old buddy Bill Johnson, my, how you changed. Said your hair was blonde, now it's brown. And he said, Your eyes were brown, now they're blue. And he said, You used to weigh about 140 pounds, and now you weigh 206. And the guy said, My name isn't Bill Johnson, it's Steve Smith. He said, Well, what about that? You can change your name too. <laughs> Heard a fellow say, This Christmas, he said, I'm going to get a visit from a big, jolly fellow with a beard and a sack on his back. And a guy said, is it Santa Claus? He said, it's no my son coming home from college with his laundry. <laughs> I mean, you can be mistaken. <laughs> Somebody says, well, here's this book here. This is the real thing. No, uh No, I did the real thing right there. One time a lady showed a, a ring to her, one of her jealous rivals said, uh, well, what do you think about that? And she said, it's a Batman Dakota ring, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, hey, Ruckman, uh, what do you think about that Bible? Well, it's that's Bugs Bunny in Disneyland, isn't it? <laughs> How they hate me when I talk like that, you know. Donald Duck in Wonderland, you know, and a thing like that. You know what that is? That's just a bunch of stuff that wouldn't make good lining for a dumpster. Amen. You know who says that's the Word of God? Every faculty and staff member of Bob Jones University. And the ones they trained to come down here to teach. <laughs> Yes, amen. Oh, one or two more. Uh, let's see. Let's turn to uh, let's turn to Acts chapter eight and look at verse thirty-seven. Acts eight thirty-seven. Now I told you, going to be a bad day for some of you. It's not the season to be jolly right now. And I'm not dealing with gnats. I'm dealing with camels. I'm not straining out gnats. I'm dealing with stuff like the virgin birth and the deity of Christ. On right, Acts chapter eight, verse thirty-seven. Okay, so much for that one. That verse is not in this Bible. But you understand, this is the last of Bible you can uh, believe in. All right, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. You know what these fellows call their own kind? They call them good godly men. You know what they say about Ruckman? Ruckman is not a nice Christian. Let me tell you, the trouble isn't Ruckman. The trouble is a bunch of lying thieves who would steal your clothes off your back. That's the trouble. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? What will leave out? Read it. Say it again. Say it again. Somebody's not obeying the truth. So they took it out. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Somebody wasn't obeying the truth, so when they had a passage that said you didn't obey the truth, they took it out. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Romans chapter 13, 9, for this, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, is summed up in this saying, you shall love your neighbors yourself. What do they leave out? What, what is that? False Say it again. False Say it again. False My, what a coinky dinky. <laughs> I mean, here in Romans chapter 13, they left out, don't bear false witness. In Galatians, they have left out, you shall not obey the truth. Guess what, guess what, guess what rail they're running on? Why don't you find out who these people are? Why don't you ask them? Why don't you check them out? Why don't you sit them down and say, uh, what do you believe about the book? What's the Scripture? Why don't you write them a letter and say, Brother Ruckman down there is ranting and raving and roaring and slobbering and slandering you good, godly, dedicated people. Tell me what you actually believe. Why don't you check them out? I've got them. 
These fellows have found fault with every fundamental known to a child of God. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3.16. There's the greatest verse in the Bible in the Incarnation. 1 Timothy 3.16. I'm reading, of course, from the word-for-word -word translation of the verbally inspired original Greek text in a Bible that at last you can trust. 1 Timothy 3.16. And by common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. He was revealed in the flesh, was vindicated in the spirit, beheld by angels. Don't you have the word God in there? There's no God in this Bible. I said there's no God in this Bible. God ain't in this Bible. You say, he who, the antecedent of he, he who would be the mystery of godliness. And the mystery of godliness is neuter, and he who is masculine if you want to start messing with the Greek. That ain't all. There ain't no verb in that sentence. Uh, excuse me. There isn't any verb in that sentence. <laughs> there ain't no verb in that sentence. And they put that walls in there that second time. They made, you know why they made that up? Oh, I know these birds. I know these birds. Do I know these birds? Do I know these birds? You know what they did? They put on ASV back in 1901 when they hit that thing there. They put down the he who, and when they got through, they constructed a sentence that had a subject, no predicate. I ask uh, Miss Meacham about that. They had a sentence that said, he who did this and did that and did this and did that and did this and did that and did this and did that. And the sentence had no predicate. So you know what they did? They fixed it up and made it into a sentence by putting in the word was and didn't put it in italics. Liar. You dirty liar. You dirty dog, you dirty, cheap, rotten, good for nothing, two faced, split mouth, split tongue, liar. That's you and the father taught you and your friend with you. Their ecumenical movement is a spiritual bankruptcy. They don't believe any Bible. They don't even believe the book that they say they believe. I mean they find fault with everything in the book. Mind me one time a waitress came to three guys at a restaurant and said, What do you want? And the first guy said he said, I want some, a tuna fish sandwich. She said, no, you don't want that. He said, why not? She said, haven't you heard about the mercury in the fish? And he said, well, okay, okay, never mind. I'll take corned beef on rye. <laughs> so the second guy, what do you want? He said, I'll take uh, a toasted English muffin. She said, don't you know that toasted bread has sodium in it? He said, okay, just plain bread and coffee. You don't want coffee. Why not? To keep you awake. Okay, milk. <laughs> She turned to the third guy and said, what do you want? He said, well, what suggestion would you make? And she said, uh, well, who's got time to make any suggestions? <laughs> I mean, what these people are doing, they're attacking every verse in there, and they can't fix it up. You see this thing here? This has 50,000 changes from your King James Bible in it, and they've revised this six times since it came out. You know what they're telling you? This is a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, and when they fix the mistake, you say, you got them all fixed? No, we got 30,000 more. And they fix this one and fix that. They can't fix it up. Amen. They can find fault with it, but they can't make a suggestion how to fix the thing up. They'll steal your Bible. You know what Luther said? Old Martin, you know what he said? He said, Cursed be any love and compassion that puts the Bible at stake. You got the love, do you? Well, let the damnation of God be on it. Cursed be any love or compassion that puts the Bible at stake. If the cost of your love is compassion is that book, then the hell with your love and your compassion. You got that message? Blame me for saying that. That's Martin Luther. Back there in 1520, he had more sense than some of you folks got in 1990. Ah, uh, two more. Second Timothy two fifteen. Second Timothy two fifteen. Nothing but vinegar this morning, folks. Luther, cursed be that love and compassion for whose sake the Bible must be put to stake. Second Timothy two fifteen. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth. Boy, was I ever deceived. <laughs> man, I thought you ought to study the book. What a fool I was, man. I got in that book and began to study and study, and then I devoted my life to teaching that book to folks who wanted to study. Man, was I ever a fool. What a, what a sapphire I was, man. I thought the Bible said to study it. 
How many of you have study in your Bible? Let me see your hands. You got the right book. Up there at Bob Jones, University of Bob Jones Jr. and Bob Jones III, tell all the students when they come in, you have to look out for Ruckmanism. You look out, have to look out this for this heresy of Ruckmanism, this, this King James onlyism. Let me tell you something. You got a King James Bible. You have the only Bible on this earth in English that says to study. Amen. There are no Bibles that says to study it, except the King James. If you got a new King James, it doesn't say you should study. Somebody wants you to quit studying. They're a thief. Mafia. Cosa Nostra. <laughs> Good, godly, dedicated gangsters. But you and all your friends, you're welcome. There's more coming. You know, it's amazing. You get, you're slamming down on drinking and slamming down on smoking and slamming down on shorts and slamming down on matador britches and women wearing men's clothes and the lay men, yay, men, yay, men, yay, men, yay. And you stand up here and call a bunch of lying thieves by their name, a bunch of lying thieves, and it gets as quiet as a turkey farm on Thanksgiving afternoon. What are you worried about? I ain't worried, and I'm saying it. <laughs> I think some of you are afraid you're going to get caught in bad company. I never worry about it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. We're about through. Revelation 22, 14. Faith of our fathers living still in spite of Rice and Jones and Hort. <laughs> Nestles, theme, Hudson, and all of their sort. Help us to fight the good fight. Faith of our fathers in this book and shrine, given to us by grace divine, help us to ignore these jealous thieves who lord it over the saint who believes. O God of our fathers, destroy their pens and confirm this book till this age ends. God of our fathers, bankrupt their lying books and bring down their proud and haughty looks. Holy books, surviving Greek scholars and swords, may God establish your powerful words. Faith of our fathers, living still in spite of Horton, Hudson, and Hobbes, grant we may cleave to your words and forsake their heathen gods. Uh, amen, 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 amen. You say, what are the gods of those people? <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> Haven't you got that figured out? Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are those that wash their robes, that may have the right to the tree of life, manner by the gates into the city. Is that what yours says? I don't think so. 18. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city and from the holy city which are written in this book. Doesn't your say the book of life? This is the tree of life. Listen, brother, if taking away words from that word of God keeps a fellow from partaking of the tree of life, these fellows have stripped so many leaves off the tree of life, it looks like a telephone pole or a flagpole. A Bible believer will not recommend this kind of crud. A fundamentalist will recommend it. The faculty and staff at Bob Jones of PCS or Bible Baptist College recommend A Bible believer won't recommend this kind of crud. A Christian will recommend it. A Bible teacher will recommend it. A good, godly, dedicated, spiritual man will recommend it. But a Bible believer won't re recommend that kind of trash. That isn't the Bible. That's Bugs Bunny in Disneyland. You say, what's wrong with that book? Well, it attacks the blood atonement. Colossians 1.14. It attacks the deity of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4, verse 27. It attacks the virgin birth. Luke chapter 2, verse 33. It attacks the incarnation. 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16. It emits whole verses and words. It teaches docetism. Luke chapter 23. It teaches Arianism. John chapter 1, verse 18. It lies about its sources. It did not come from the original Greek text. And it lies about its acceptance. It said this book is destined to replace all of the translations. And this book has been outsold by four translations since it came out. Four of them. The Living Bible outsold this one. The new RSV outsold this one. The new KJV outsold this one here. And the old RSV outsold this one here. The lion. They will lie. They will lie. They will lie to you from the pulpit. They will lie from you to get your money. They're a bunch of lying thieves. They'd steal your faith in the Word of God. And every one of them is a born again, saved, Soul winning, some of them. 
soul-winning fundamentalist, and the new birth never affected their propensity to lie or their proclivity to steal. Ruckman's the trouble. Ruckman, 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 Ruckman. Ruckman, you're foot. Ruckman's just an old redneck down here who plays hockey and goes mullet fishing when he can and tries to keep body and soul together and to teach a few people the Word of God. Ruckman ain't the trouble. The trouble is that book. That's the trouble. The trouble is that book. Ruckman's the trouble. At Bob Jones, they call him in orientation. Two thousand young men and women and warn them about the errors of Ruckmanism and King James onlyism. You know what they'll do? They will lie to you like a dog. All right, let's uh, let's take our uh, psalm book here, and let's sing uh, "Wonderful Words of Life." What number is that? If our musicians will come, let's stand and sing. I'm not going to invitation this morning. I've upset some of you for almost four or five weeks, and you'll never get over it. And the rest of you that enjoyed it, why well, it can't bother your digestion anyway. You'll enjoy the new meal. Let's sing. What is it? 234, 234 in the hymnal, wonderful words of life. Now listen, if you've been leaving this book around, you have been reading this book and studying this book and praying and loving this book and believing this book and teaching this book and preaching this book, it's time to start. It's time to start. And I don't care who recommends this kind of garbage like i got here in my hand. I don't care who recommends it, Billy Graham or Bob Jones Jr., or Bob Jones III, or Alan Horton, or the pastor of the, of the Campus Baptist Church, not ain't a Baptist Church, it's a campus, a new interdenominational mess, or, or I don't care who recommended this thing, the most godly, dedicated, spirit-filled, holy man of God you have met in your life, scratch him! Scratch him! That stuff there is spiritual garbage. Amen. What's the number? 234, all right, 234. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. All right, here we go. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. That's how to become a strong Christian. Carry around a Bible like that, brother. <laughs> the next stanza. Uh -huh. Give to all wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life, heaven, wooing me to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Merry Christmas. God bless you. That's all.